That's Iris Spitzer there reporting for us. All right, now let's take a closer look at how auto tariffs are shaking up the global market. Michael Coates, editor and publisher of Clean Fleet Report, joins us now from Palo Alto, California. Welcome to the show. Good to be here, Rochelle. So this Section 232 auto investigation launched by the U.S. alleges national security concerns. What's your take on this and who will be impacted the most? Well, the, the basic take is it looks like there's a collision here between domestic uh, politics in the U.S. and international trade. Uh, the Trump administration has made promises uh, about changes in the tariffs and trade and uh, it's things that can't be done unilaterally, uh, as he found out with, uh, as, as you were just talking about, about some of the international tariffs. So uh, it's, uh, it, I think it's yet to be seen whether there's any real impact. So why do you think the Trump administration is turning their attention to this particular sector? Well, uh, the auto sector is hugely important in U.S. industry. Approximately one in six jobs are related to it. So it's, it's a major factor in the whole economy. So that, uh, that, that makes sense that they would want to focus on it. So given this America first stance, you have some U.S. trade partners, including Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, saying this is more about getting leverage on the North American Free Trade Agreement or NAFTA negotiations. And then you have others saying it's more about the U.S. trying to sort out its trade deficit with the EU. What are your thoughts? Uh, I, I think NAFTA is the big uh, kind of the elephant in the room, if you will. Uh, half of the imported vehicles come from either Mexico or Canada. So that's uh, when you're talking about adding tariffs, those are the ones that are affected the most. Uh, and those are all mainline brands, both domestically located brands and imports. And what's been the reaction so far from automakers and auto parts suppliers in the chain inside and outside the U.S. so far? I think you could sum up the reaction in a word, which is fear. Uh, the global automakers, uh, the one thing that they fear the most is change. Uh, they don't like to see markets disrupted. They don't like to see anything added or taken away, essentially. Um, so they, they do not like the idea of uh, the threat of tariffs and how it might impact their business. Now, something that could be a welcome change is China pledging to lower its auto tariffs starting from July 1st. Who would you say benefits the most from these changes? Oh, that's, that's easy. The, the biggest benefit is Chinese consumers. Uh, Chinese consumers will now be able to buy the foreign cars that they really aspire to, uh, like Teslas and Jeeps and others, uh, and get them at a better price. And as we know, that also means more competition for the domestic market as well in China. And you already have automakers like Volkswagen and Tesla announcing plans to slash their prices. How much of a game changer is this, especially with China being the biggest auto market in the world? It, uh, it's interesting that you mentioned Tesla. Tesla probably has the biggest advantage because they're a new player in the market. They can take advantage of some of these changes, both the reduced prices and the uh, changes so they don't need to have a joint venture, and they have the potential. The, there's the biggest upside for them. The established automakers that already have joint ventures are going to find it much more difficult to change. They're they're very comfortable in their current relationships, and they're very successful for them. Now, China also loosened its regulations on shareholding of auto companies. How likely are we to see some of these global automakers really take advantage of these opportunities in the short term? Uh, I don't think I don't think you'll see much change in the short term. Again, uh, Tesla and newcomers are the ones that are most likely uh, to be able to take advantage of this. Uh, the the companies that are in uh, relationships, Volkswagen, General Motors, and the others, are are not going to abandon those. So they will they will stick with those uh, because they're very successful and they're making good money. And just taking a broader view, what do you see as the biggest issues facing global automakers this year? Uh, biggest issue, I think, is, is one that continues uh, uh, from year to year, which is the threat of local recessions. Uh, if, if the market, if there's a downturn in the market, that can, that, that can spread across the globe, and that, uh, that's probably the biggest fear. Right behind that is regulations. Uh, they're very comfortable with the 
regulations that are in place, uh, they, they have the ability to meet them. But uh, as you saw in the U.S., when the U.S. threatened to roll back some of the regulations, uh, the auto industry actually reacted fairly negatively to that because they already have them baked into their plans. All right. Thank you so much for your insights. Michael Coates there of Clean Fleet Report.